Hello. This is the first talk I'm going to give of many on geological activity. So the aim of these talks is to explain geological activities and associated processes and concepts in a way that is understandable also to those people who do not necessarily have a background in geology. Of course, I hope that students and professionals will find some of these talks uh, of, of interest or useful. But the main thing here is that they should also be understandable to people who are interested in geology, but do not have the background in, in that field. The talks are supposed to be very short of the order of maybe 10 minutes or something, something like that. But why should we care about geological activity and related earth processes? Well, that's because the earth is, of course, the planet we live on. Yes, there are ideas and have been for decades of humans settling on other planets, particularly on Mars. And uh, this photo shows the earth as taken from above the surface of, of Mars. But Mars or Venus may be in the far future, Mars in the, in the near future possibly, uh, may be settled, but still the Earth is likely to remain our main home for a long, long time. And the Earth is not very large. We see it here uh, rising uh, above the edge of the moon. This photo is taken just above the far side of the moon, around 130 kilometers above the far side of the moon. And we see our, our home planet. The blue, of course, is the sea, and the white is the clouds, and uh, the brownish areas are the continents. We see mainly Africa here, uh, part of, uh, of uh, South America, and the tiny part of Western Asia. It's not a big planet, and uh, uh, as we all know, it has very many people living on it. Today, there are around 8 billion people living on the planet, and these nighttime lights indicate uh, that, of course, uh, parts of the planet, uh, the continents, are very densely populated. And it indicates, of course, we need to understand uh, the processes, the geological processes that give us resources for humankind, but also the processes that can give rise to hazards, risks to humans. And uh, my aim here is to discuss both of these types of processes and uh, see uh, in the case of hazards how we could possibly mitigate them uh, or even in some cases potentially prevent them. So what kind of processes am I going to discuss? Well, first, if we discuss some of those related to resources, they include, of course, groundwater. Here we see a beautiful flowing groundwater coming from a contact between the lava flows. There's a young lava flow here cleaning the groundwater, cleaning the, the water. Often the water here is maybe 100 years old when it comes out here and uh, flowing then into, into a river in West, West Iceland. So one of the processes that I'm interested in and will discuss, of course, is related to uh, groundwater uh, in the Earth's crust. Then, of course, it comes to energy, and the renewable energy uh, is, of course, a very important uh, topic these days and has been for some time, and one of the fields where geological pro processes most certainly contribute to uh, renewable energy resources is, of course, geothermal energy. And here we see uh, a geothermal energy field, a high temperature field in northern Iceland, where we see a lot of uh, 
uh, steam vents and uh, some of these are, are drill holes in fact in northern Iceland and geothermal energy is, is clearly uh, on the increase as a renewable energy source in the world. So these are resources that I will discuss and many others, of course. But then we have hazards. Volcanic eruptions come to mind, obviously, and I will discuss volcanic eruptions of various types. Here we see a fissure eruption in in Iceland in uh, in in recently in the, in, in the 2023 uh, beginning states of a fissure eruption. And of course, we need to understand the conditions for volcanic eruptions, how long they're going to last, the volume coming out. And in in, in case, of course, of uh, magma field fractures propagating towards the Earth's surface, we need to understand uh, how we can forecast the, the eruptions. But the eruptions are not the only hazards that people face uh, uh, in various places of the earth. Uh, earthquakes uh, are common. Here we see an example of an earthquake, uh, a rather large one, magnitude 7.7 .7 in Taiwan in, in 1999. And this is earthquake uh, resulted in a so-called reverse fault movement here. So the, the fault movement was many uh, the ground movement was many meters. Uh, this building, this block, was uh, well built, strong, and was um, able to sustain the earthquake. So it's mainly through rotation, as you see. Uh, there's, of course, damage. There was huge damage in this earthquake. But this building here shows that in some cases, strong buildings can sustain even uh, large earthquakes. So that's something we need to keep in mind uh, for, for, for the future, obviously. I will also discuss processes related to faulting in general, including uh, tension fracture formation and normal faulting, faulting of any kind. Here we are looking at big faults forming part of the plate boundary in southwest Iceland, the so-called Thingvellir area in southwest Iceland. And... Uh, I will, of course, discuss how these fractures form, how they relate to earthquakes. And then, because this is a part of a plate boundary, I will also discuss, in a more general sense, plate tectonics, the plate tectonic processes, the processes that drive the, drive the plates. They are not well understood at all yet, and uh, we will discuss them in, in, uh, in some detail in some of these uh, short talks. Of course, this map is very, very old from uh, 1968 from the National Geographic, and it shows uh, the the Mid-Atlantic Ridge uh, in in a way that people in a very schematic way in the way that people thought it could look like then. Is it not far from what what we think is the situation today based on modern knowledge? But we should also remember that geological processes and, uh, and activities are not confined to the Earth. They occur on all the uh, terrestrial or solid planets and the satellites. And here we see, for example, an uh, extremely uh, detailed view of a huge collapse called there was a ring fault in the top of a gigantic uh, uh, volcano, Olympus Mons, on the planet Mars. In fact, this is the largest volcano known in the solar system. It's 80 kilometers, uh, the caldera is 80 kilometers, so-called nested caldera, means that several calderas within the big caldera here. But the volcano as a whole is 600 kilometers in diameter. So the volcano as a whole is similar in size to uh, the whole of Iceland. So we will discuss these things as well. And uh, uh, also we should not forget that the geological processes occur 
on the many of the satellites, uh, the, they are solid. In this case, on Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, we see a fracture pattern, very interesting fracture pattern, not really well understood. And the surface here is water ice, is water ice. And uh, these fractures obviously are forming in a similar manner to many fracture patterns we see on Earth. Still, it's not really clear exactly how they form and how they're maintained. And volcanism and volcano tectonic activity is not confined to the Earth only. It ha happens also on on uh, on. Io, Io, uh, the, the moon that is closest to Jupiter. And we see this beautifully here in an elongated collapse caldera. This is a collapse caldera here. These are the caldera rims. So there has been subsidence here. The central part has subsided. And this photo is taken when there was a fissure eruption going on here. 45 kilometer long volcanic fissure was erupting when this photo or image was taken a long time ago. Now, uh, the um, processes discussed here are explained in more detail in books. I can only briefly mention these processes, of course. For the general reader, many of the processes are discussed in relation to the geology of Iceland or the geology of part of Iceland, so-called Golden Circle, in these books here, in English and in, in, in German, if, if people find that of, of help. And then all the technicalities, also the, uh, the physics behind these processes, uh, those who like equations and physics, they can find many of the processes discussed in detail here, including fluid flow in the Earth's crust, the volcanic activity, earthquakes, tectonic activity, and many other, other things uh, in these two books here. One is called Rock Fractures in Geological Processes, and the other one is called Volcano, volcano Tectonics. In addition, uh, to my teaching at Raw Holloway, where I teach uh, modules or courses on volcanoes and uh, earthquakes and fluid transport and many other processes, I offer a course, an online course, called Volcanoes, Their Formation, Form and Function. And this course discusses many vol volcanic, tectonic, earthquake and fluid transport processes. And here we see uh, a kind of uh, overview of the course uh, where you can see the uh, some of the structures and volcanoes discussed like uh, Tate and Las Canadas and the Canary Islands, uh, the rift zone in southwest Iceland, recent eruption on, on the Reykjanes Peninsula and the, the beautiful uh, Augustine volcano in Alaska or the United States. So with these words, I say simply, thank you very much indeed, and bye-bye for now.